this is the cute little barn um, at our new property. Uh, this is Thunder. I decided to use Thunder as um, our little model for the grooming section. Uh, Thunder is a six-year-old paint, although you all know that paint is a breed and not a color. Um, and so because we don't have any papers, it's hard for me to call him a paint because I cannot prove that he's a paint, so I almost have to call him a quarter horse pinto, but obviously he looks like a paint. Um, very nice horse came to me with quite a few issues and he's worked through them beautifully. Uh, I've had him six weeks. Uh, he goes nicely walk trot canter under saddle. Uh, very happy, very willing around the property, great on the trails, and he is currently for sale. So this is uh, one of my tail horses. He's owned by a lovely woman named Susie. But obviously, you can see, wonderful horse. So I'm going to go through the grooming, all right? And I have all that already in wording. Um, so already on the Helpful Hints page, I've got all the grooming information. And I'm just going to take, take you through it physically so you see um, what I do. So this is what I use for my grooming box. I really like them. They're light. They're easy. Uh, they're small. I can wander around from horse to horse with them. So I just put everything in a little bucket. Starting off with the sweat scraper uh, shedding blade. So <laughs> um, the shedding blade I, I love. It's sort of my go-to. Um, it's, it's fall now, so their summer coats are um, shedding out and they're growing in their winter coats. But I just start here behind their ears and I use the shedding blade side. And I just work down their body and they love it. And you'll see, the harder I push, the happier they are. Some horses don't want you to push so hard and they'll tell you, they'll show you that they're uncomfortable with you pushing too hard. Um, other horses really love it if you push hard. I do do their chest area and then I work my way all the way down and back. Um, and you'll see as I do this, when I get, even, if I, even though I groom him every day, you'll see a uh, bunch of hair coming up off from the shedding blade. Um, all the way up and through here. Okay, so you want to do their entire body from behind their ears. I don't do their legs with the shedding blade. Um, I do do their bellies. Uh, they can be pretty sensitive here around their flanks, so usually I'll skip that area. But you'll see how much hair comes off. I mean, there's plenty of hair that comes off with the shedding blade. All right, so I start, see, it just kind of starts raining off of them. So I start with the shedding blade. Okay, this is if we're doing a full groom. Uh, a full grooming is probably going to take about half an hour, 20, 25 minutes, half an hour. Uh, the horses love it. It's great exercise for the handler, for you. It's great exercise, helps with having to go to the gym. Um, it's a great way to bond with your horse and um, spend quality time with your horse. It's actually, uh, in my opinion, grooming is the way to a horse's heart. They really love it. They love to be groomed. So shedding blade both sides. And then since we're doing a full grooming, the curry comb, all right? The curry comb looks like this. I like this old fashioned version of a curry comb. And I just do the same thing. So starting behind his ears. Now the curry comb is the only brush I can think of that you use in a circular motion, all right? If you're using the curry comb, you don't really have to use the shedding blade. I just like to use the shedding blade right off the bat. So you'll see how much the curry comb takes off as far as the, the hair. What we're doing right now with the shedding blade and with the curry comb is trying to get down deep into the coat and pull out the really hardcore deep dirt and the hair. So, and like I said, the horses love it. Um, they want to be curry, they want to be groomed. If you have a horse that's super sensitive, It'll tell you, it'll uh, walk away from you or start pinning their ears back. But most horses, once you start currying them and spending good quality time grooming them, they really love it. They really enjoy it. So the curry I use in all the same places. Um, I usually don't do legs. I will do their bellies, which they especially usually love. Um, haunch, down to about here. Okay. Again, the flank area sensitive. And so usually I won't use the harder brushes around that. Um, 
I just as a note, um, when I'm using the curry, all the dirt and grime and stuff will get up in here. And so I'll bump it here on my leg, on my foot, you'll see me kind of curry a little bit and bump it here. Or you'll see me curry a little bit and kind of tap it on the wall. And that just pulls the gunk out. Are you okay, Kenna? Yeah. Going okay? Yeah. Good. Okay, so curry count. Right? Yeah. Now we go to the hard brush. Technically, this is called a dandy, dandy brush. Um, I like these smaller brushes. They fit much easier in my hands. Uh, for a woman, I find these uh, smaller brushes are much easier. This one's blue. Of course, you can get them in any color. I believe all the stiff brushes, all the all the dandy brushes, they're usually plastic bristles. I usually get the plastic bristles. So with the hard, same thing. Start working your way behind the ears. Work your way down the chest. You can do the legs with the stiff. I usually don't go too much into the legs with the stiff. Working your way down and back. Same idea. Really putting elbow grease into it. Really pushing a little bit. Getting down into the deeper parts of the coat. Um, that's what the stiff brush is good for. Same idea. Working your way all the way down, down the back legs. Um, that's the stiff brush. Next after stiff is the medium. These are usually natural bristles. Again, I like these smaller ones. Um, and I do this a lot, just kind of pulling the dirt and stuff off. Same idea exactly. Starting behind the ears, walk, working your way down and back. Uh, brushing down their legs. Um, you have flies on your eyes. Sorry. Sorry, flies on your eyes. He's getting really soft. From the places I've been grooming him, he's getting really soft. That's the medium. Okay, at this point, I usually leave the soft. This is the soft brush or the polishing brush. Obviously, it's the softest to touch. Um, I usually leave the soft for very last. It's the polishing brush. It's the one that takes all the rest of the, just the, the surface dust, takes that off and gives them a really, really pretty final product. So before I go to the soft, I usually go to the main and tail. Okay? So Shoshin, remember I talked about it on my website. Shoshin tried and true product. Love it. Um, this is the side your main lives on, right? I think so. Yes. Alright, so what I do at this point in my grooming process is I just saturate the main nicely with the Shoshin. I don't do their forelocks. You probably could. And I saturate the dock of the tail. Okay? Now the dock of the tail is apart from here to here, where the bone is. His bone ends here. The dock I really think of as these, this top part. Okay? So I saturate that with Shoshin too. And there's a whole other section on um, tail itch that I'm going to talk about in a moment. Um, I like these dollar store brushes. You see them on the website, what I like. They're a buck. They work great. I love them. So it's very self-explanatory, obviously, when you comb out their, their manes. Um, it does often help just like with people with long, with long um, hair. If you start at the bottom, kind of work your way up. You might just comb it out nicely. The boy, most horses like this. You're a good boy. You're okay. He thinks it's funny. <laughs> you think it's funny. The boy and his forelock. Sorry, the slides are really bad this time of year. They're trying to get as much done as they can before the weather changes. Um, and our farrier is arriving. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take this and we're going to move it into the other barn. Okay, so we'll see you in just a moment.